1 John chapter 1. 1 John chapter 1. I want to uh, talk to you tonight about the Christian's walk. The Christian's walk. <clears throat> Let me get me a little sip of water here. <clears throat> we'll begin in verse 1. <clears throat> And we'll go down to verse 30. <clears throat> the Christian's walk. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness, to bear witness of the light, that all men through him might believe. Let me just stop there a second. I want to give you something to think about. I was thinking about this today. There was a man sent from John, or sent from God, whose name was John. The same came for a witness, to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. How many people do you know of that are saved people, members of a church, but they're showing forth the light? A lot of people come to church, they sit through Sunday morning, Sunday evening, Wednesday evening, they go home, stay out till Wednesday night, stay out till Sunday night, Sunday morning, whatever. They don't call anybody. They don't send a, now a lot of people do. You, people are sitting here. That's one thing. I know a, that's different. But a lot of churches turn away, and people turn away from that. And we need somebody to be a light. Amen? We need somebody to be a light. We need to be, as we walk in this world, we need to be a light. So he says, the same came for a witness, to bear witness of the light <clears throat> that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true life, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, listen to this, but as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of flesh, did you get that? Nor of the will of man, but of God. When I got saved, it was through God. When you got saved, it was through God. Not through this church, although God's using the church for that, but he uses men and women for that. G.N. Francis, I'll never forget that day, age seven years of age, and he slipped back. Uh, in the, I was sitting by my mother, and he slipped back, and he said, Bobby, he said, uh, don't you want to go to heaven? And I said, well, yes, sir. And uh, he said, well, would you let me give you the plan of salvation and so forth and so on? And uh, my mother said, all right. And so we went back, and we talked a little bit, and he said, now, I'm not going to push you, but I want you to think about it. And I said, okay. And so I didn't go forward that day, but the next Sunday I did. And I passed from death unto life because a man cared enough to talk to me about it. And so I wanted to do that the rest of my life. When I walked out of that church that day, I said to myself, that's what I want to do the rest of my life. And I've pretty much done that all of my life. And I've got to, I've been knowing about you too. You want to see the church to grow. You want to see people saved. And I'm so thankful uh, for that. Now go back to verse 9 again with me. That was the true light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor the will of the flesh, nor the will of man, but of God. And the world was made, the word was made flesh, and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. John bare witness of him, and cried, saying, This 
was he of whom I speak. He that cometh after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. And of his fullness have all we received and grace for grace. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Amen. The law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. No man has seen God at any time, but only his begotten Son, which is the bosom of the Father, he hath declared him. And this is the record of John when he, the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who art thou? And he confessed and denied that, had not confessed that I am not the Christ. And they asked him, What then? Art thou Elias? And he saith, I am not. Art thou a prophet? And he answered, No. Then he said, uh, then said they unto him, Who art thou, that we may give an answer to them who sent us? What sayest thou of thyself? He said, I am the voice crying in the wilderness. Did you see that I am there? I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the, the way to the Lord. And said the, the prophet Isaiah, and they which were sent were of the Pharisees. And they asked him and said unto him, Why baptizest thou then, if thou be not that Christ, nor Elias, neither that prophet? John answering them, saying, I baptize with water, but there standeth one among you, whom when you know not, he it is that cometh after me is preferred before me, preferred before me, whose shoe latchet I am not worthy to unloose. These things were done in Bethbahara, Behon, uh, Jordan, where John was baptizing. The next day, John seeth Jesus coming unto him, and saith, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me cometh a man which is preferred before me, for he is come before me. We could uh, talk about, uh, from this scripture here, uh, the Christian's walk. The Christian's walk. Jesus walked among the people. The prophets walked among the people. We ought to be walking among the people. And when we're out in the, the crowd, when we're out in uh, uh, people around them, uh, just today, just today, I went down to the mall and I was do my walk that I walk every day. And I walked by one of the, the places there uh, that I go by and this young man stopped me. And he had a card in his hand and I thought he was going to give me a track. And he said, would you like to win $5 million and held that thing up there? And I said, young man, I doubt I would ever get close to that, and you would never get close to it either. And then I said to him, but I've got a card. I'd like for you to read it. That'll help you get to heaven. And that, got his, uh, that sort of got his goat. He didn't know what to say. Oh, well, I, I'm, I'm, I'm in a hurry, you know, all of that kind of thing. But, you know, when we walk, we need to be soul conscious. Amen? We need to be soul conscious as we walk among people. Now, I'm not bragging, and I know that you're not bragging, but the Lord wants you and I to be a witness as we walk through this life, as we Christians walk through this life. Now, let me give you these, and I may not read all of the verses to you uh, from the Scriptures, uh, but I'll give you as much as I can. Now, we have these, uh, these notes that I want to give you. Number one, I will walk in the fellowship with God. As I go through life now, and I want the opportunity to help men and women get to heaven, uh, I'll walk in fellowship with the Lord. Now look, I'm not going to make any headway, hardly any headway, if I don't walk with him. And he's walking with me. Uh, I'm so thankful that I can go to the scriptures and I can pray and I can get with other men and other pastors and I learn so much and then I get out there and I know what I've got to do and where I need to go and the way I need to say what I'm going to say. I'll walk with fellowship in fellowship with God. Now just that, listen to me, just that will make a big difference in my life. Just that will make a big difference in your life. 
How many Christians do you know will probably walk out of this church on Sunday morning and they put their Bible in their car or they put their Bible at a case at home, they go out to work, they go out wherever they go and they never give out a track, they never ask a man or a woman, sir, if you died today, do you know you'd go to heaven? Can I share this with you? You see what I'm saying? I want to get a, to be one of those men, and I know that you want to as well. But the first thing we want to start out with is we want to walk in fellowship with God. 1 John 1, 7 says this, But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. Isn't that great? God wants members of this church to walk together in light, walking with him walking together in light, fellowship one with another. Now look, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. In that one verse right there, there is some tremendous truth, a lot of truth there. Look at it again real quick. 1 John 1, 7, if we walk in the light as he is in the light, Watch it. We have fellowship one with another. Now, that's the first start right there. That's the first start. Now, I thank God for you folk, and you're here most of the time. Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night. You're here most of the time, and you listen. But are you taking it in as we walk together? And then do you take that out, what you learn, do you take it out to those you work with? Do you take that out to people you come in contact with? Now, when I talk to that young man today, you see, I wanted him to take a track. I wanted to give him something and show him how to get to heaven. But he wasn't interested in that, see. But yeah, at least you give an offer, don't you? And so uh, fellowship one with another, how that helps. Now watch, fellowship one with another. Don't let the devil get in and try to put a stop to that. But the devil will do his best to get in a church and break it up so that truth will not go out. Satan is a wicked, wicked, wicked individual. And he knows how to try to cut the man of God down, the woman of God down, so that we can't take these people and lead them to the Lord. You see... Here's the important thing. We will walk in fellowship with God. When we do that, then we'll be walking in the light. We'll reach others and bring them to the light. And then maybe they will do the same thing. And, but this is so good. The blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleanses from all sin. Baptismal waters do not wash away the sin. Baptismal waters. You're getting, you go to the water as a picture of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. That's what that's about. And I'm glad that we do that. Okay? Number two, not only will we walk in fellowship with God, but we will walk in Christ. We will walk in Him. These verses are so important. I hate to get in a hurry, but I know you folks have other things to do, but I'm not going to really head through this. But uh, we will walk in Christ. Now notice, those who walk in Christ, I love this, those who walk in Christ are known as children of light. They are known as children of light. I want to be known as a child of light, and I believe you do too. And so don't uh, take, take notes and don't, uh, don't let this get away from you and, and maybe get alone somewhere and go through your notes and just as you go through the notes, ask the Lord to help you to get a hold of that. Now let me give you the verses that you're going to need. Ephesians 5, 8, Ephesians 5 and verse 8, John 12, 36, 1 Thessalonians 5, 4 and 5. Now all of those verses are about we will walk in Christ. Get up of a morning. When you get up of a morning and you stake, take out, won't you ask yourself this question? Will I walk in Christ today? 
Will I? Will I walk in Christ today so he can use me? So that someone might pass from death unto life? I led a man to the Lord one time. And uh, it was uh, when I was here this the first time. And uh, she was out in the yard, and so I was able to work, witness to her over in this section. And I was all able to walk over to her, gave her a plan of salvation. And I said, ma'am, we're out here in the yard. The people are around. Would you ask Jesus to come into your heart and give you everlasting life? And I saw a tear come down. And she said, yes, preacher, I would. And I said, let's kneel down. And I gave her the scriptures. And it took a few moments as those tears coursed down her face and she stood up and she wiped her, wiped her head and her eyes and so forth. And I said, now, ma'am, this is very important. If you died today, where would you spend eternity? She looked at me and wiped the tears away again. And she said, preacher, heaven, heaven. And I saw that look on her face and I knew she meant business. So I gave her some material and she went back to her church and started going to her church. So when we walk in the light, those who walk in the light of Christ will be known as the children of light. Now, I gave you Ephesians 5, 8, John 12, 36, and 1 Thess 5, 4, and 5. Number three, we will walk in newness of life. We will walk in newness of life. Sometimes I'll go back to a man that I've led to the Lord. And I'll go in and I'll have a little talk and they may bring something to eat or something to drink. And then I'll stop and I'll get the man's attention with his family sitting there. And I'll say to him something like this. Do you know for certain, beyond a shadow of a doubt, that you're walking in newness of life? And you know that the Lord Jesus Christ is your Savior, walking in newness of life. That's important, isn't it? So let's ask ourselves this question many times. Am I walking in newness of life today? You know, it's a sad thing when people criticize one another. And that hurts. Did you know that? That hurts the church. That hurts the people that are true. That, that does. And so we want to be the best witnesses that we can. We will walk in newness of of life, not the old life, because we'll be walking in darkness if we go back and walk in the darkness. We'll be walking in darkness. And I don't know about you, but I don't want to do that. Now, you know 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things, all things are made new. Behold, all things are made new. Isn't that, a, isn't that a thrill? Isn't that a, isn't that a joy? Hallelujah. And so here are these verses, these important verses. Now, let me, let me keep going. Number four, we will walk in the fear of the Lord. Let me say that again. If we are doing what we're supposed to be doing as Christians and with our Christian walk, we will walk the fear with the fear of the Lord. You know, what if we thought about it and we thought we ought to do it and we should do it and we say we're going to do it, but we don't ever do it? You keep going back to church and back to church and back to church, but people don't ever do it. And that's a sad thing. And then just remember now, folks, remember before the great white throne judgment, and of course the Christian's not involved in that except standing there is a witness. But those who are unsaved and turned away from the gospel will watch them be cast into the lake of fire where they'll spend eternity there forever and ever and ever and ever. We need to walk in newness of life, not this oldness of life. And then put down... Chapter 4, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 22 to verse 24. And then we'll walk in the fear of the Lord. We'll walk in the fear of the Lord. That is the reverence of the Lord. 
You know, when I hear you sing out there, and you're just singing with your heart, and you know what that does? That gets in my mind, then it gets in my heart, and then it just brings joy to listen to you, to listen to our people sing. Our brother right there, is, I like to hear him sing when he can, and, I, and our brother back there sing. We want the Lord to give us a, a joy so we can have a heart that's true. And the Lord is going to help us uh, through these things. We want to walk in the fear of the Lord because one day we'll stand before him. Now let me give you these verses. When we walk in reverence of the Lord, we'll serve him, we'll follow him, we'll serve him, we'll follow him. Here's your verses now. 1 Thessalonians 4.1, 1 Thessalonians 4.1, 1618 and Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians 2, 12. Now, I like this next one. I love this next point. We will walk in love. I've been in the ministry a long time, and I'm not bragging, but I've been in the ministry a long time, and I've seen a lot of things. I've seen a lot of wonderful things, and I've seen a lot of hateful, wicked things. Uh, I, I've watched people who want to run the show, men and women who want to run the show, uh, and they don't want the, the pastoral staff or the past. They don't want that. They want to run it themselves. And that's a sad thing. Awful things can happen from that. And that's where you need a leadership, beginning with a pastor, to the deacons, and then to those that are teachers and leaders in the church, we work together, love one another, but we walk lovingly and carefully to help people to get away from that so we'll have a church that will, God can use to, to lead as many people to the Lord as we can. You see, this, is, this thing we're talking about is in the reverence of the Lord, to serve him, follow him, 1 Thessalonians 4.1, 1 Thessalonians 4.1, 1 Thessalonians 2.12. And then let me hurry. We will walk in love. A lot of talk about that. We will walk in love. We will walk in love. And as Christ also hath loved and hath given himself to us as an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling savor. Now, I know tonight you won't have much time. Uh, you'll go home and eat a little something, and you'll go in bed and so forth and so on. But when you get home or when you're eating at work, bring your notes with you and read the verses and, and just to, uh, see what they're saying and memorize as many verses as you, as you can. Ephesians 5, 2 says, And walk in love, as Christ also hath loved us and hath given us himself for us as an offering and a sacrifice to God, a sweet-smelling savor. Now we have two points to go. Next, we will walk in faith. And brothers and sisters, we need that one, don't we? We will walk in faith because I don't, I don't believe you can get much success in serving the Lord if you don't have the love for the lost, the love for the Word of God, and we're walking in faith and not by sight. When we do that, you've heard me say this again, that is a sweet-smelling savor for God. Two more. Six. We will walk in faith. And brothers and sisters, we need that. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. For we walk by faith and not by sight. And we will contrast that with walking by sight or walking by faith. I want to walk by faith, don't you? And so I want to see the Lord use me in a wonderful way. You see, Abraham is an illustration of that. And read his life. Read excerpts uh, from his life. And there are contrast in his life, but he's the kind of man that God used, it, used in a marvelous way. All right.
my time's getting by. Let me give you these verses now, and we only have one more. Hebrews 11, 5 and 6. I think you already know that one. Colossians 1, 23, and 2 Thessalonians 1, 3. We will walk in faith. And here's a very important one. We will walk in the way of truth. We will walk in the way of truth. Sometimes I make a mistake and say something and I, and I misconstrue. You do too. All of us do. And we want to be careful not to do that. But when it comes to walking in the way of truth, that's very, very, very important. Now listen to John 1, 2 through 4. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as thy soul prospereth. For I rejoiced greatly when the brethren came and testified of the truth that is in thee, even as thou walkest in the truth. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. Wow. Boy, that's a powerful thought, isn't it? I mean, that one point right there, this last point, we'll walk in the way of truth. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospereth. For I have rejoiced greatly when the brethren came and testified of the truth that is in thee, even as thou walkest in the truth. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. I try to keep an eye on my children. They're grown. They're married. They have their own children. They go to church. They're faithful going to church. But I keep a, a record. I mean, I call them. What are you, what are you doing? What did, you, what did you do here? What, what, were you, what are you doing in church now? What are you doing in your class? I like to keep up with that. They may be... Uh, bigger and stronger than I am, uh, but I've, uh, I've got a way of getting around that. No, you're not going to borrow any money. <laughs> All right, I'm joking. All right, let's stand. We'll be dismissed in prayer. Uh, thank the Lord for your presence and for being here tonight. Father,